Kindly sit down. I am just a mayor, not a president. You heard it. Well, uh, I have a prepared speech of about three pages. How long did you wait for me? You know, uh, and the secretary, you felt, and I were uh, just about 15 minutes ago, we were racing was the other chopper, helicopter, uh, to be here on time. We did try, but uh, you know, uh, we had to discuss, uh, made the assessment, uh, made ocular inspections of the damage, and uh, since the cabinet members were there, we had a conference of uh, how the task could be divided so that the places uh, hard hit by the earthquake would return to normalcy as soon as possible. That is the catchword uh, of every catastrophe and disaster. It's always try to endeavor uh, as fast as you can to return to, to normalcy. So that is what uh, I did there. So let me just uh, make the acknowledgments. The Health Secretary, Francisco Duque, the officers and members of the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease led by Union President, Dr. Guy Marx, Dr. Ral Antic, Union President, Asia Pacific Region, Dr. Camilo Roa, I think uh, he's uh, a relative of mine, we sound, come from the same place. Uh, it's a small one, so I would say that maybe my father was either his neighbor or a relative. <laughs> Dr. Takashi Kasai, Regional Director, World Health Organization. I love the words he used uh, in characterizing the situation. Uh, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me, you know better than I am, so uh, let me just uh, divert a little and talk about uh, my country. And what ails my country? Well, number one is that uh, I've been making several uh, uh, statements before regarding law and order and governance. What I say to you now, I will not be there forever in the office. Uh, as a matter of fact, in about three years' time, I'd be gone for good since I could no longer run for any other position except maybe uh, to retire uh, and plant whatever there is uh, to be planted. I don't own the land. Maybe I would plant people. <laughs> uh, and let me just address uh, to all of you so that you'd know a bit about my country. I hold it as an article of faith that unless the, uh, the, pre uh, the present situation, if there is no law and order, and if we cannot stop corruption in this country, n no matter what we do or will be doing or have done, won't help. We are troubled with uh, drugs, uh, rebellions uh, by the NPAs, and the Mindanao situation is the Islamic insurgency. We are lucky that in the two revolutionary fronts of the MI and LF and the MN, we were able to 
find a solution to give them what they wanted. For after all, it was just an issue of territory. Uh, long before the Spaniards came, and of course the Americans, Mindanao was already Islam. Uh, that is why when the Spaniards came and they had the muskets and the cannon and the gunpowder, uh, the natives had to kneel down because of sheer firepower. And the Americans also, and uh, it was during the time that there was a uh, uh, sort of uh, a catchword, sloganeering, was, uh, go to Mindanao because it is the land of promise. Go west, young man. And uh, over time, uh, the population grew and outnumbered, uh, I'm referring to the Christians, outnumbering the population of uh, Mindanao. And it was the Americans who started to divide the nation, Mindanao, opened and they introduced the Torrens title and just like in America, distribute the lands to all, they call it the homesteads. It's an American uh, version of giving away public lands. And that was really a big problem because they forgot that before he came, Adam and Eve was already there. And I'm referring to the tribes of uh, the Moro, the native uh, Muslims of Mindanao. So I said the MNMI was just a issue of uh, territory. And, uh, but there is a certain place which I would not recommend to anybody to go there, not just as yet is Sambuanga. Well, there are still too many problems because some uh, Europeans go there for the bird watching. And they are captured and eventually they are decapitated even after the payment of ransom. It's the ISIS actually. It used to be the Abu Sayyaf, it's a band of brigands, but uh, now it's an Abu Sayyaf territory. And you know the Abu Sayyaf, they do nothing but to kill and destroy. And it's a very inter in, an interpretation which is so corrupt. And they would like to mean it to be what is in their head. That's the mass insanity. So, I'm talking about how to get into the services of the poorest of the poor. Because they are the ones who need it most. They are the ones who live in squalor, in blighted areas, no nutrition, and very susceptible to bacteria and virus. Well, virus is a matter of destiny. You get to survive, then maybe you are freed of the contagion. But TB and would need a lot of uh, care, antibiotics, periodic injections, and all that. I know this because I've been mayor of Davao City for 23 years. I've been a prosecutor of that place for nine years. And I was also the vice mayor once upon a time, a congressman, and eventually the, my office there in Pasig River. <laughs> I, I, you seldom hear me talk about the presidency or Malacanian. What you would hear from me is my office and I'm just a mayor, I'd like to just be being a mayor. So nothing much is expected of a mayor. And that has been the main complaint against me because he said, he's not a statesman. He talks in vulgar terms. 
and uh, epithets, curses, and all. Oh, those are the language of uh, languages of the mayor, especially in Mindanao. You don't get the results when you do not say po tang inamo. You, uh, it's a it's a, a depressed uh, international. They don't like me. So when I say putang inamo, actually it's it's a it's a it's a slang. We call it slang, and it only means a son of a bitch. But when depressed, the Philippines and otherwise would quote me shitting somebody with putang ina. You know, it's not even a crime. The Supreme Court said when you say those words, if it adds curses and slang words in the heat of anger, you tend to use the mother, you know, F and everything. And the rich uh, language abounds in the inflict. I counted one movie with the word uh, F, and they, in, in one movie, I, I purposely did the listing. They said it 400 times in a one hour, 45 minutes movie of Enflect. So, and besides, I, I was not schooled in statesmanship. There is no course of that kind in the Philippines. Otherwise, I would have enrolled it and improved on my demeanor. But uh, uh, I said I've been mayor and I seem to, they do not like my barong folded this way because uh, it's a national attire. But I have been in this kind of uh, characterization of my sartorial insanity. And I just don't follow rules. Well, anyway, that, that's the problem. How to penetrate? You know, like, for example, the Department of Health. It is run by one of the most competent doctors in the Philippines, Dr. Doki. He has been the Secretary of Health of past presidents. And when I became president, we only shook, I shook his hand once in, I think, uh, Edsa Plaza. You were the woman at that time? Was that your, do <laughs> your daughter or your, maybe eight? I don't know. But, uh, you seem to be enjoying uh, the time of your life, <laughs> and you saw me. Just kidding. Yeah, but I did see him there. So it's a problem of how really to go about gathering these people, not to corral them, but we have the health workers have to penetrate the mountain and. Uh, in areas there, I said, where blight and squalor abound. The problem bugs down along the way to the intended beneficiaries. It's either government people are indolent, not all, or they just really don't bother just to do their work with a little bit of patriotism. Maybe after five o'clock, they go home because that's it. And I saw it in other countries. At the stroke of five, they just drop everything. And, uh, and this, are the, this is the kind of attitude that really is a monkey wrench in the running of uh, government machinery. Uh, because most of the people, actually, we are hitting 105 million people. About 
almost 99 million. They just do not have the money to for the cure to spend. It's a series of injections and you need money. And it behooves upon the health workers, really. And we have a strong advocate for that. But it's a matter of discipline sometimes. And uh, especially now that there are a lot of people who are into drugs. And you know, people who are into drugs do not have the appetite to eat. That's why their hands are half of my breath. Most of them do not eat. They do not sleep. And they just wait for the monkey to ride on their back. And it begins to be itchy. They look for, they crave for the drug. And uh, most of them are poor. So sometimes you equate drug addiction to crime. Most of them are sick. I said they do not have the nutrients. Their, their uh, food uh, is terrible. It's all carbo, no protein, and they're just uh, content of having. The Filipinos are fond of salty foods to accompany the carbo. And, uh, they never actually learn the art of eating protein, vegetables, and that. They are ignorant. I hope I'm not berating my country, but that is the truth. And we have to have proactive, proactive social workers or health workers. Uh, and that is why I do not, maybe the estimated number of uh, addicts uh, could be correct or it could be wrong. Just like uh, the drug contamination when I became president. Over the years, you guys were citizens of this country. So how it developed. Lunan is running for senator this election was called by the DEA, the Department of uh, Enforcement of Drug in America. Alunan was secretary of the DILG during Marcos's time yet. And he was told there that at the rate Shabu is swallowing your country, we would not be surprised if you end a narco politic in just a few years. And subsequent to that, the two other presidents. You could only read the by bust operation, Shabu, one or twice. And the amount quoted was always in the thousands. Then the last uh, administration, it became millions. And now it be, has become a billion dollar industry. There's the Sinaloa of Mexico. I hope I do not offend anybody here. They run the country, the elections, they elect the people, they choose. And that is what happened to my country. It started with the barangay captains, and that is the most basic political unit of government. It's like a county, then goes to the city and become a state. There were about 14,000 barangay captains all over the country. And there were about a good number of the mayors already elected. So I was forced to call them in Malacanian, just like what Alunan did during the time of Marcos. I was mayor. He called us and said, he gave the warning. 
So I was always conscious of that, but I've always been uh, angry at crimes because of my work as a public prosecutor. I was doing trial work for the government. So when I became mayor, I brought along my chief of police and placed them at the highest position of the PNP. He was only one star, a place, when I appointed him there, he automatically became four star. And I said, there's only one thing that I would like you to do. Open the records of the drug industry in the Philippines. So when he opened it, you saw, by your own eyes, thousands of sick sickly, thin, malnourished Filipinos going to the barangay or to the police by the thousands. And of last count, we had about Bato says, he's now running for senator. I urge him to run because he can help our country. So well, open up. So when he opened the files, I realized that I was going to fight my own government. That's what the thing about, do not believe it, but some suggested revolutionary government. Because uh, right at the start, there were nine generals of the police in the greater Manila area who were into drugs, and the customs was rotten. And they imported the drugs by container. During Arroyo's time, it was by the thousands, Aquino by the millions. This time, with the entry of Senyalosa and the 14K drug of Asia, the drug industry is booming and the problem has become a global concern. So with that also, the health of the people deteriorated. If you take shabu, if you are poor, you don't eat, you don't sleep. If you have an issue of a lung uh, ailment, it gets worse. And our health workers cannot penetrate the areas just like in any other place. There's a place in Washington, D.C. at night, you are advised not to enter into that alley because you will never go out alive. In L.A., downtown, you cannot because just Count a few numbers and you get mugged automatic. So just like in the Philippines, some of my work workers cannot. And in the mountains, they are mistaken to be spies of government. So they are detained by the communists, investigated. But most of the time, they are released, but they are the scare of their lives. So I started to count, and General uh, De La Rosa counted it at 1.6. Previously, Santiago, the director, counted 3 million. And I said both are correct. Because the count of Bato was limited to the area of the greater Manila jurisdiction. So even if I place it at the very conservative number of the Count of Bato, which is a newer undertaking, I would still have about 1.6 million Filipinos who are slaves to a drug called Shabu. And they have to have it every day, and if they do not have the money,
they will kill. They kill the rub. And when they get high, it's, a, it's an everyday occurrence. They enter houses, rape the mother, rape the daughter, rape the infants. That is what is so abominable. You know, they do not understand. Human rights people, they do not understand it. He would just say, Duterte killed 5,000. Well, those who did that, they, they never, but how? Who is he? Why was he killed? For what reason? What is his crime? And then you worry a dead carcass there of one. But the contamination of Shabu affects millions. Not the 1.6 who are already there, but the social dysfunction of families. If the breadwinner of the family falls down, then the wife will probably get into quarrel every day until she is battered, uh, spousal battery, and that's what happens. And the children no longer go to school. And the money intended for food on the table is gone. And they distribute because one addict has to recruit one another to support his addiction. And this guy would endeavor to get to recruit another to support his addiction. He will get his supply from the profit he gets from this guy. Then this guy would have to look for another one. And it goes on and on and on. And if you count the number of dysfunctional families, the innocent one and the young women who are lost to drugs, they either join the fray or they go into early prostitution to survive. That is what the human rights cannot and will never understand. So when I was mayor, I said, I'm going to build a city, enough, comfortable enough. I will return the streets and alleys and parks to the people and to the children. So they can go home safe and sound, unbridled by molestations or what not, being raped, being drugged, and, and it happens with regularity. And these are the things that the human rights, for their stupidity, do not comprehend. That is why I said when I became mayor, I'm going to build a city. It's going to be peaceful. I'm going to force the issue. People have the right to go out at night and enjoy. And the children. And I said to the chiefs of police, Ask your wife and your beautiful daughter to walk about the streets of Davao City. If they come home unmolested, undisturbed, very happy, then that is the standard for our city. And I told them, and also for those who destroy people either by crime or some other way you, you begin to mess up with society, I will kill you. When I became president, I said, do not destroy my country. It's struggling. Its economy is not that good, but we are trying our very best. 
to the drug people or to the drug lords. Again, I said, putang. Don't even think of it. In front of the people of the Republic of the Philippines. Again, I will say, I will kill you. Period. No, no apologies, no nothing. I love my country. You know, not everybody can be president of this republic. Uh, I do not want to lengthen by bragging about how, how I reach into this uh, task. But no, the presidency is really, believe me, you ask the people, the Filipino, how I got elected without money and without any help. Uh, I had about uh, Aimee Marcos and uh, Abed Garcia. Then in Masbati, Governor Ko, only because the son was my fraternity brother. In the Visayas, where my father comes from, who came from, Danau, Cebu. I never had even a barangay tanod. In Mindanao, I had the support of, active support of Subiri, the father and son, and Governor Amante. But beyond that, I didn't have any money. Why I, I really do not know. I cannot answer you now. Maybe it was a very stupid decision. But if you ask me now, in the hindsight, in the hindsight, when I think of the moment I decided to run, that I regret. But I'm going to work for the next uh, three years. But if you ask me if I'm happy with the job, I am not because of so many corruption and I have to fire. I'm leaving for China, and before that, I will leave so many letters of dismissal. Corruption is really, seeps down. You have to have uh, something more than just a warning. I'm the only president who Ako lang presidente ng bububog ng tao. Tanungin mo yung mga gwardiya na. Yung mga hangol. Uh, pag mas ang uli, sabi ko, ulihin mo yan. Niya, Give me your money. I said, do not bring money. So the soldiers, uh, the white ones there, the, they would say, Give me your money. And I would say to the guy, Eat it. And sometimes there's one or two small coins, including the coin. But mayor, it will get stuck in my. Correct. It will really stuck in your. It will block your shit. And that is good for you. Uh, I, I do not uh, like people may, uh, before I end and all these wars and all this uh, do not ever think you criminals wherever you come from be it in Mexico or in do not ever ever think that you have a monopoly of evil in this world. Because we are all, it's an option sometimes one is forced to, I said. To be president, I do not understand how God made it possible. 
but it is a gift from God, I'm sure of that. But let me just add it. We need to cure TB and other diseases. Man in government should have free access to every place here without being and without being molested, disturbed, and bridled by any worry, so that the purpose for which we are here can be realized. You prevent that to ha the activity to happen, then my God gave me the presidency, I will give you a gift. I will clean this up. I hope to do it. Still have three years to kill all of them. Then I go to prison, so be it. I get hung, my pleasure. I'm 74 years old. I do not want to die of TB. I do not want to die of lung cancer. As a matter of fact, I got, uh, I acquired uh, Burgess disease for smoking. That is why my doctor is here. She gets my blood. What's it? Ah, see? Almost every other day. And I said, doctor, leave me some for to survive and it's just a week. I, it's about Berger's disease, uh, but I've stopped smoking. When I became mayor in Davao City, I stopped smoking, I said. They said, it cannot be done because Filipinos, you know, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. We will see. And I said, if I catch you smoking in public, You'll just have to eat your cigarette. Choose. I you blow your balls out, or you eat your cigarette. Davao, you can, there's nobody, not even when you walk in the highway. You go to Davao, you have time after this. It's clean, nobody. I have a gift for you. I am a government worker and I work for the people and to preserve the Republic of the Philippines. Thank you.